factorial factorial are basically the products suppose we are interested to compute uh, phi factorial so phi factorial means what phi factorial means 5 into 4 into 3 to 1 this is called phi factorial. There are the two ways to represent the phi factorial. One of the common way is phi and then an exclamation sign. This is called phi factorial. Factorial is what? K factorial can be defined as k into k minus 1 into k minus 2 and so on. The last one is 3, 2, 1. All these products if the find if you find the value of this product then this is called k factorial uh, be careful zero factorial is always be one factorial is basically used for permutation the reason is if we have to arrange k items on k places then that can be done by k factorial if we have k items and k places that can be performed by k factorial permutation without repetition repetition permutation without repetition suppose we have r objects and these r objects are to be arranged on suppose we have r positions that have to be arranged on R places. I'm sorry, we have R places and N objects that can be done by M permutation R. This can also be written as M, M objects is to be arranged on R places. So NPR, it is equal to M factorial divided by m minus r factorial m factorial multiplied by m minus r factorial this is called arrangement of m objects on r places if m and r both are equal so this will be equal to the m factorial because if m and a r both are equal then denominator becomes zero factorial and only we have on m factorial. So m objects to be arranged on m places can be done by only m factorial. So m permutation m is equal to m factorial. As I told you on the previous slide that k object on k places can be done by k factorial. So in the same way, the M objects on M places can be arranged by M factorial. Now, if you are able to find out the number of permutations with the help of, with repetition, and the repetition of N objects on R places by with replacement, then this is equal to N raised to the power R. So there are the two formulas of permutation. One is N P R and other is N raised to the power R. N raised to the power R for with repetition and M P R for without repetition. Now we have to solve some problems. Problem number seven. The number of permutations of five objects taken three at a time by with replacement and by without replacement. By with replacement, the formula was n raised to the power r. By without replacement, the formula was n p r. So you we have to solve the problem by with and without. So in part a we are doing by with replacement. 
विद रिप्लेसमेंट और विद रिपीटेशन how many objects we have we have five objects and on how many places we have to arrange them we have to arrange them on three places 5 raised to the power 3 is equal to the 5 into 5 into 5 this is the process of simple product rule So we can solve the pro problem either by permutation or by simple product rule. In part B, we have without repetition. How many objects we have? Five objects we have, and three are taken. The so five permutation three. that can be done by 5 factorial divided by 5 minus 3 factorial this is equal to 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 factorial in denominator we have two factorial two factorial will be cancel out with this two factorial we have 60 total possibilities here we have 100 and Twenty five possibilities, and other way we have sixty possibilities. Another formula of permutation is distinguishable permutation. Distinguishable permutation will be used whenever we have n one objects. which are alike with all in all respect we have another set of objects and two which are alike one cannot distinguish these and two objects among themselves but one can distinguish these and two objects with the previous set of objects which is represented by n then total different and distinguishable permutations will be what n factorial divided by n1 factorial multiplied by n2 factorial where n is what total number of objects we have this can be represented by d capital d for distinguishable permutation total objects are n1 the first set contains n1 objects and the second contain n2 objects for example in problem number 8 we have this word accountancy and we want to find out the all possible permutations of the word accountancy in the word accountancy it is repeated what is repeated c is repeated how many times c is repeated c is repeated three times a is repeated two times n is repeated two times And t once, n two times, u once. We have to count how many total are and how many separate letters we have. By counting them, we can we can complete the problem by distinguishable permutation with the formula n d n one n two. so on as many categories we have n k suppose i am using the term k for this and what the formula is this is equal to n factorial divided by n1 multiply by n2 factorial 
here we have factorial and so on nk factorial this is the formula in the word countancy we have a occurring two times c occurring two three times o one time u one time n two times total are how many total which is n is equal to 11 letters because we cannot distinguish a among themselves all the a are in capital letters all the three c are not distinguishable all c are in capital letter and so on but if the situation we have one c is capital other c is in small then is not come to the distinguishable permutation the reason is these c are different um, in uh, nature and different in sense the distinguishable permutation total permutation d 11 to 3 2 i am not representing the ones the reason is one factorial becomes one so i am not representing one factorials so 11 factorial divided by 2 factorial multiply by 3 factorial multiply by 2 factorial this is equal to Eleven factorial will be equal to this, and two factorial multiplied by three factorial multiplied by two factorial becomes twenty-four. Whenever we divide these two numbers, we have one six six three two zero zero permutations. These permutations are distinct permutation. The reason is if we replace this a and this a all together, so we will have the same word. there will be no change so we have to count only the distinct permutation so these are the distinct permutation it means this accountancy will occur one if i place this a here this a here then that will be counted as one word which is accountancy so in this case understand the main concept of the distinguishable permutation if suppose we have a word i e y e and we have another word and a and d and so how many permutations of the word and can be formed so 1 2 3 3 three letters with three places can be done by 3 factorial 3 factorial means 6 What that that six are a and d, a d n, n a d, n d n, n d a. Then we have d a n. These are total six. There is no. All the permutations are distinct and distinguishable here. But that is not the concept of the distinguishable permutation because we already have distinct permutation in this example. Now, if we are considering this example, here we have. I two times three factorial divided by two factorial. Three factorial is six. Six divided by two factorial is three. It means we will have 
only three permutation which are distinct. The same number of letters we have in I and the same number of letters we have and in and we have a six distinct permutation, but whenever we are I have I, only three are distinct. The reason is E, Y, E, which is the first one. If I replace this I, e, this E and this E, then again we have the another word, which is I, which is similar to the previous word, so that cannot be counted again. Only distinct permutation are, are what? E, Y, E, Y, E, E, and double E, Y. These are only the three distinct permutations. Otherwise, if I replace this E by this E and shuffle them, will be the same word, double E, Y. So only three distinct permutations we have here and six distinct permutations we have here. This formula applies whenever all letters are distinct then there is no need to divide it by the repeated numbers. This formula will be used whenever we have a repeated digits or a repeated letter in my given sample. So that, case, that is basically the case where we have to apply the distinguishable permutation. Last formula in this uh, presentation is combination. Combination is M, C, R. If we have M objects and we want to select R at a time, then that is a case of M, C, R. This can also be written as M and R and the round bracket there. But there is no division sign here as a, uh, uh, in this notation is equal to the m factorial divided by r factorial multiplied by m minus r factorial m minus r factorial what is the main difference between the permutation and combination in permutation we are considering arrangements. The term arrangements will be used for permutation, while the term selection will be used for combination. So that is the main difference between the permutation and combination. Combinations are the selections. A cricket team is to be selected, a sample of size five is to be chosen, uh, three students are taken from my class. All these type of problem can be solved by combination. If you want to arrange five student in a line is a permutation. If you want to arrange eight objects with the three places is a permutation. So arrangement is a permutation while um, selection is a combination. In combination, order does not matter. In permutation, the order matters. Means A and B are the two different permutation. Suppose the two students we have A and B. If we are saying that we are arranging A and B on these two seats, so A can sit here, B can here. But on the other way, B can sit on the left position and A on the right position. So these are the two permutation or the two arrangements. But if we are saying that two students are chosen out of these two, so there is only one option. That is A and B both are chosen. So that, that is one, one, one option we have in that case. The combination and permutation, you should have a very clear cut concept about the differences in permutation and combination. Permutation order matters and these are arrangements. Combination here, the order does not matter, but uh, these are called selections.
from a batch containing five boys and six girls a group of uh, five students is to be selected so how many boys we have we have five boys and we have six girls total students are 11 11 students and how many are to be taken how many are to be taken we have to Three boys are in per day. Three boys are to be chosen, and two girls are to be chosen. It means a committee of five are to be um, committee of five students is to be chosen. So out of eleven, five are to be chosen. In per day, we have to consider the gender in five students. Three boys are to be chosen and two girls are to be chosen. Out of the five boys, three boys can be chosen by five combination three ways. And out of the six girls, two can be chosen by six combination two ways. So five combination three multiply by six combination two. It is equal to ten. Multiply by it is equal to fifteen. Hundred and fifty will be the total combinations in which three boys and two girls can be selected. in part b we have to choose two boys and three girls two boys can be chosen by five combination two ways and three girls can be selected by six combination three ways so for part b the solution will be five combination Two multiply by six combination three. In part C, we have to choose all the five boys. So totally, we have five boys in my population, and I want to choose all the five boys. so that can be done by only five combination five ways so this will be equal to one because if we have the five boys and all of the five boys are to be are to be chosen then we have only one option that all five boys are taken so you can simplify the part b yourself in problem number 10 committee of four members is to be selected among the six labor delegates we have six labor delegates and four management representatives the total number of participants are Ten, and out of these ten, a committee of four is to be chosen. Four members are to be taken at a time. By how many ways? Out of the ten, these four can be chosen with the restriction that. at least two labor representatives in part a which is uh, you have to pick four 
So that part A can be done by then combination four. Why combination? Because we have to select the participants out of the 10. 10 out of 10, four are to be chosen. With regardless whether the representatives are chosen belongs to the labor rep representatives or from the management representatives. So there is no restriction or these are just four. There is a possibility that all of these fours are from the labor. There is a possibility that all of these four are from management, uh, two from labor, two from management, one from labor, three from management, and three from labor and one from management. These are all possibilities which include in 10 combination four. But uh, I'm interested in part number B, how many committee formation will have at least two. The important thing is at least two labor. At least two labor means at least two labor. Either two labor and two management or or can be plus two labor three day there may be the three labor and one management and we may have the four labor representative because it was given that we have to choose at least two labor so we can choose either two labor or three labor or all the four labor two labor can be chosen by six labor by six combination two and multiply by two management representative can be chosen by four combination two four c2 plus 63 multiply by 4C1 plus 64. Because totally we have six labor representatives out of the six labor representative in the last case, we have to choose four. Now you have to complete uh, these combinations separately and multiply them, multiply them, and then add finally, you will get the last answer. I'm not going to solve complete solution. I'm just giving you the idea of how you have to complete this problem. In problem number 11, a Venn diagram is to be constructed. We have uh, three sets in which the set of the customers who buy Jung and Don, finally the business recording. The customers who buy Jung, the customers who buy Don, so I am constructing three Venn diagrams. One for Don, other is for Jung, and the business recorder. The Don D, this is set D. This is, no, this is business recorder. This is the set of Jung. Then Dawn and business recorder. We have to start by the last statement. What the last statement is saying, three customers buy all the three papers. This is the segment which is representing by the customers 
to buy all the three newspapers. Then the second one, 16, Jung and Business Recorder. The Jung, this is Jung, this is Business Recorder, 16 by Jung and Business Recorder. Out of 16, these three are already be here. 13, this segment contains. Totally the intersection of Jung and Business Recorder is 16, so you can see. This, this complete intersection comprised on 16 elements, or the 16 customers. Now, 15, the Dawn and the Business Recorder. This is Dawn, this is Business Recorder, and the intersection of Dawn and Business Recorder is 15. 15 minus three, it is 12. Now, previous to that, we have 17 by Jung and Dawn. Jung and Dawn, the intersection of Jung and Dawn is 17. So, already we have three, so this will be 14. Now the next information is totally we have 15 customers who buy business recorder. So in the overall set of business recorder, we should have 50. So after eliminating these 13, three and 12 from this complete business recorder customer, we remains 22 here. 60 by dawn, so in the complete set of Dawn, we should have 60. Out of the 60, we have to subtract 14, 3, and 12. This remains 31 here. If I add 31, 14, 3, and 12, this will be 60. And the last information is 70 customer by Jung. The complete set of Jung comprised on 70 customers. After eliminating 14, 3, and 13 from 70, we have 40 remaining. So this is my complete sample space. In the probability theory, this set is referred to as sample space and represented by S. In the set theory, this is represented by universal set U. And if I am interested in the customers who buy junk only, it is 40. 40 are the customers who buy junk only. 31 are the customers who buy Dawn only. 21 is the are the customers who buy business recorder only. 12 are the customers who buy Dawn and business recorder, but not Jung, because this is the segment which is representing the 12. So who these 12s are? These 12s are the customers who buy Dawn and business recorder, but not Jung. We can write down this information as Dawn intersection business recorder intersection J dash. J dash means what? Not purchasing junk. So customers who buy Dawn and business recorder, two, two, two newspapers, but not junk, eliminating by these three. So this can be represented by, if I am writing N, N for the number of customers in this category, so this is 12. If I am interested in the number of customer who buy all three, we will write down this as B intersection B intersection J, not J dash. 
and how many falls in this category only three only three customers buy all three the d intersection b intersection j the number of customers is three. that is the way to interpret these sets and this theory is very important it will be used in the chapter of probability because if we are uh, using the set then probability laws of probability the next chapter will be quite simple if we understand the set theory um, clearly now the last problem is the problem number 12 in this chapter in this presentation in how many ways a cricket 11 is chosen out of the 14 players so it means i have 14 players out of these 14 players 11 are to be chosen how many of them will be if i am interested without any restriction to choose 11 players out of 14 that can be done by 14 combination 11 ways 14 combination 11 ways is the total number of ways by which we can choose 11 players out of the 14 but in part number 1 there is some restriction what that that restriction is include a particular player it means a player out of these 14 one of them is out class player we must have to keep them or keep him into my team so i have chosen one already so how many are more to be chosen 10 because one is already selected i have to select 10 out of how many out of 13 because out of these 14 one was the out class player that is chosen already the so 13 custom players we have from which i have to choose 10 more the so 10 players can be chosen out of 13 by 13 combination 10 ways if i simplify this this is equal to 13 factorial divided by 10 factorial multiply by 13 minus 10 factorial these are the number of players to be chosen in part number 2 exclude a particular players it means out of these 14 player one is the player which have a worst performance and the selection committee does not want to choose him and does not want to keep him into the team so how many players i have from them the selection committee will going to choose 13 players out of these 13 players how many to be chosen committee of 11 because team comprised on 11 players but one of them was not as good as we require so we have eliminated from the entire list so out of the 14 now we have 13 and a team of 11 is to be chosen that can be done by 13 factorial divided by 11 factorial multiply by 13 minus 11 factorial that is the end of this presentation this chapter is uh, comprised on counting techniques in this chapter three major topics are covered one of them is permutation second of them is combination and the 
initially we started by product rule product rule and permutation both are identical product rule is more flex flexible as compared to the permutation but we can change we can use interchangeably where we we can apply any of them but uh, most of the problem of uh, arrangements can be solved with the help of product rule finally we have studied combination combination is used for the selection purposes in combination the order does not matter while in permutation the order matter thank you very much